serve a mighty God. Our worship leader on today is none other than uh, Sister Devorah Barna. So let us prepare ourselves to receive her as she leads us in our worship on this morning. Let's receive her now. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good so glad morning. to see you all. We stand there for our doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. Praise him above ye heavenly. have our missionary litany led by our president, Sister Gwen Baker. Amen. Help wanted. Missionaries are needed. The Lord is looking for willing people to go out and be disciples and proclaim his word. Are you willing to go? In today's society, people are constantly asked to volunteer their time to help their fellow man. Many yes. refuse to assist others, but what if, it, if this is God's way for you to proclaim that the, his word will go forth? Also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Who shall I send and who will go for us? Then said I, Don't deny the people that God has destined for you to bless or reject the opportunity to receive what God has prepared for you to receive and share with others. Here am I, send me to do whatever you have destined for my life, that I will go and bless your people. God has given each one of us a specific assignment. Do you hear the voice as Israel did when the Lord asked, Who shall I send? Are you readily available to answer the call and go out and proclaim his word to his people? God, I thank you for the renewed strength and blessings. God, please continue to strengthen us, your people, to be disciples for your word as a servant leader. I accept God's hand and will upon my life. Let the Lord be magnified in Jesus' name. Amen.
we have our prayer, morning prayer by Sister Doc, Dr. Stephanie Morgan Fry, followed by a scripture by Vivian, Sister Vivian, Amen. Sister Vivian Cassie. Amen. <laughs> Good morning. Let us bow. Great God, Jehovah, in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, we humbly come before you, asking you to intercede in this service, that you be with us, Lord, as we conduct the work as missionaries and the understanding of what missionaries are supposed to do. Recognize that we have an obligation, a duty to teach others about Jesus Christ and his great commandment to love God the Father and all others. Help us, Lord, as missionaries to never falter from our duty of love for children and all people from all walks of life in the world, the vulnerable, the sick, and the ill. May we work, Lord, as missionaries in our daily lives to fulfill the command of Christ, to spread faith and the joy and the word of God to all people. So on this missionary day, may we as missionaries be forever vested in the service to you, O Lord, and share the message of Jesus Christ by representing Christ in our daily lives. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Good morning. Our scripture this morning is coming from Matthew, the 28th chapter, verses 16 through 20. Then the 11 disciples went away into Galilee, into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. Amen. I have read God's word for God's people. Amen. Amen. Let me thank uh, Dr. Fry and Sister Cassie. Now we have a song by the music ministry, Victory is Mine. And we all know victory is ours as long as we Amen. live in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Bye. 
this time we're going to ask our officers to come up to receive our offering. Uh, remember that God loves a cheerful giver, and all his works we do the, is bringing honor to him in the kingdom, in the uplifting of the kingdom, in the upbuilding of the kingdom. So do it from your heart, and we love you all. As the ushers prepare to lead you from the rear uh, to sow your tithing offering on this morning, uh, do keep in mind that you are able to give in person as well as online via our website at www.bethelbeliefs.com. We thank those of you who are joining us online today. God bless you. We know that you could have worshipped anywhere at any time, but you chose to worship with us here at Bethel Chapel, and so we thank you. And if you are being blessed by this ministry, we ask you to please sow a love offering. Amen. For as the uh, Sister Barnard said, God loves a cheerful gather, giver. They're directing you from the rear. I'd also like to uh, say good morning and welcome to uh, guests that we have worshiping with us. If this is your first time here, wait a moment before you walk, please. If you're joining us for the first time, please uh, stand. We'd like to just thank God for you being with us on this morning. Amen. And if it's not your first time and you're just a, uh, a re-guest, amen, in the house, we um, see a few people. See Brother Miller, is that correct? Uh, yes, and uh, his lovely wife. And so we thank God. Uh, they are here with us on this morning to show solidarity and support, amen, in the wake of the, amen. Let's thank God. Amen. And so we thank God for you being here and worshiping with us on this morning. God bless you. Amen. The ushers are leading you now. We'll have the introduction of our speaker by Sister Willa Joy. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Reverend Linda S. Hopkins was born and raised in Gary, Indiana and moved to Columbia, Tennessee in 1991. She is the wife of Douglas N. Hopkins, Sr. Wave your hand, Brother, we got to see you. <laughs> they have a blended family of two adult children, one son, one daughter, three grandchildren, and one great-grandchild. Reverend Hopkins attended Indiana State University in Terre Haute, Indiana uh, from 1975 to, until 1978. However, she earned her bachelor's degree in the, in the, excuse me, major in human resources from Trebekah Nazarene University. 
in December 2004. Reverend Hopkins currently serves as secretary for the Murray and surrounding counties AME Minister Alliance. The secular position held by Reverend Hopkins include assisting the CDBG grant writing team at the South Central Tennessee Development District. She serving as an administration administrative plus promoting to assistant manager of apprenticeship program at Saturn Corporation, serving as an accounts payable specialist for Diverse Care Management Corporation and serving as an assistant human resource manager for the City of Columbia. In 1992, Reverend Linda Hopkins joined Wayman Chapel AME Church, where she was a member of the Combined Choir, Sunday School Ministry, and teacher of the Youth Jam Ministry. During her membership at Wayman Chapel, she acknowledged being called to the preaching ministry. However, she relocated to Antioch, Tennessee, and joined uh, Messiah Baptist Church, serving as one of the youth ministers. Later, she returned to Columbia and joined St. Paul AME Church under the leadership of Reverend Troy Merritt, Jr. While there, she served as steward and Sunday school and, and Bible study teacher. She also completed a Christian education certification courses and was a member of the lay organization, the Cecilia Wingfield Circle and the Combined Choir. After much internal struggle, she re-acknowledged her call to preach under the leadership of the late Reverend Dr. James H. Walker, Sr. She entered the Tennessee Conference AME Board of Directors in 2007 and was ordained by Bishop Bast uh, Murphy McKenzie in October of 2009. Reverend Hopkins completed the Tennessee Conference Board Examiners during the study in October of 2011. Following her completion of studies, she was appointed to pastoral charge of Claiborne AME Church in Williamsport, Tennessee. She served the congregation with a glad heart from October 2011 till October 2021. Reverend Hopkins now serving at her original church, Wayman Chapel AME Church, under the leadership of Reverend Sharon Ogilvie. One of her favorite passages of scripture is Philippians 1.10 being confident of this, that he who begins a good work in you will carry it on to the completion of the day of Christ Jesus. The next voice that you will hear would be that of the Reverend Linda Hopkins.
Amen and amen again. Thank you, Lord. Bless the Lord. He's worthy to be praised. Amen. Hallelujah is that highest praise. Amen. I thank God today for being able to be in your midst, to be able to share with what I am going to call the greatest church in Columbia, Tennessee. Those of you, that's right, you ought to clap. You ought to clap. Yes, yes. Those of you who know me, you know this is something I say all the time. I say that you're the greatest church, and I say that to every church. Not that one church is greater than another or better than another, but that you serve a great God and that you are part of the body of Christ. That makes you great. So no matter what house of worship and praise you go into and are a member of, you are the greatest church in that area. You are so great that the word declares that even uh, uh, the gates of hell will never be able to prevail against the body of Christ. So I am so grateful to be amongst God's great people on this day. To the pastor of this great church, the Reverend Tanya, uh, uh, Lord have mercy, why did I forget? Mason, mm, mm, mm. I just must be a little bit nervous, so calm, calm down, calm down, Sister Pastor Preacher. <laughs> Reverend Tanya Mason, I thank her so much for being uh, able to stand behind this sacred desk, which she has been appointed to as the leader. I thank God again for the invitation that has come uh, on this WMS day from Sister Gwen Bailey. Thank you so much, the president of this uh, WMS Women's Missionary Society here at uh, Bethel Chapel. Thank you for the invitation because you surely could have invited someone else. So I don't take it lightly that I have been invited to come and share with you on this day. I count it a privilege and an honor. To all of the Women's Missionary Society members who are in the house on today, I give God thanks and praise for you, for your devoted work, for your devoted service, for you are always showing up for each other and for the cause for which you have been called. Amen. Praise God for you. I'd like to recognize Sister Marsha Miller in the house on today. Amen. 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 Sister Miller, again, being one of the most devoted uh, and diligent Women's Missionary Society members of this 13th Episcopal District, when they're having anything that has anything to do with the Women's Missionary Society, you can look up and you will find Sister Marsha Miller. Amen. Not only that, she is a church member of mine, and so it is so good to see familiar face from your home church. And I could not stop there because then I'd have to go all the way back to that pew where my sister Janet Ware is sitting. Thank you so much for coming out on this day. Amen. To support Bethel Chapel as well as a support to your sister, myself, in Christ. And to all my brothers and sisters who are here on this day, to God be the glory for you all, for your, for your dedication, for your perseverance, for all that you've overcome just in the past few days. I give God thanks and praise for you. Amen. Amen. There are some people years ago that what happened would have kept them from coming to the house of God. They would have bunkered down for out of fear. But God, mm -mm, he's not giving us that kind of spirit. Amen. But we have power, love, and a sound mind to be able to come out to know where our help comes from. And I thank God for it. I also thank God for the other ministers that are here in the house in particular, the Reverend Talvin Bonner, Amen. one who I have watched and gleaned from Amen. since I was wet behind the ears coming into Columbia, Tennessee. Thank God for you and all of the examples that you have set before me, before all of this community, how you have helped fight that good fight of faith yeah. in the name of civil rights and whatever else that you were called to stand up for. Thank you. Thank you, Reverend Bonner. And to uh, Sister uh, uh, Bonner, I 
worship leader on this morning. Thank you so much. Amen for agreeing to stand up and do it and without paper and without notes. That's something that I haven't learned how to do yet. Amen. And so I thank you for serving as the worship leader, the fearless, capable worship leader Amen. of this church. And to everyone else that I should have said something about and to, thank you, praise God for you. There is a word from the Lord on today, and I, had, I can't go any further because there's one who supports me, who follows me, who has been with me, who goes with me when he don't want to go with me, <laughs> who has sometimes been the only man to show up when there's been a bunch of women when I have been invited to preach, and there's none other than my sweetheart, my husband, Brother Douglas Hopkins. Thank you so much. And I said that I was through, but I got to mention one thing. I must mention Willa Joy standing up here and introducing me. You said so many things that was on that paper, but the most important thing you forgot to tell everybody is that we can. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's how we say it down south, we can. We are cousins through marriage. And so I thank God for her and her support, as well as her brother, my cousin Kenny, who is serving as our security on this day, who's Amen. parked right over there. Amen. And so I think now that I have covered all of the protocol that needs to be established on this day. And so now there is, there is a word from the Lord. Amen. Oh, thank you, choir. Thank you, choir. Amen. Amen. As they sang, victory is mine. We ought to wake up every morning singing that song with all we have to go through. Amen. Because we never know what we have to face. But when we remind ourselves that victory is mine, and then you told Satan, you got to get behind me today. Amen. Amen. Because joy is going to be mine. Amen. The joy of the Lord is going to be my strength. So, Satan, you've got to get thee behind. Amen. Amen. Would you turn with me in the word or your devices to the book of Luke? To the book of Luke. Chapter 10. And I need to get my eyeglasses, so just give me just a moment because we trying to get those. Things were starting to look a little fuzzy. And I realized that I needed this. I'm beginning at verses 1, and I'm going to read through verse 3. I'm reading from the New King James Version. Again, that is Luke chapter 10, verses 1 through 3. And it reads, After these things, the Lord appointed 70 others also and sent them two by two before his face into every city and place where he himself was about to go. Then he said to them, the harvest is truly great. There's another version that says plentiful. But the laborers are few. Therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go your way. Behold, I send you out as lambs among wolves. Amen. The word of God for the people of God. And the people of God said amen. amen. Let us pray. O oh, divine, awesome, powerful, loving God, our Father. We come before you on this morning with a heart of gratitude, thanking you, God, 
that you chose us from the harvest. We thank you, God, for those who labored in front of us and before us and who made sure that we knew the direction that we should go in. We thank you, God, for those who continue that path, God, of laboring, of teaching, of sharing, of loving, of doing, Heavenly Father, so that this world would see you in action. Oh, God, I ask right now that you would anoint me for the purpose of spreading your word. God, I pray that you would allow every fleshly part in me that is not needed to do what it is you have called me to do to decrease and that your Holy Spirit of guidance, direction, and empowerment would increase so that your people would be blessed, so that their faith would be strengthened, and so that restoration and transformation would take place. Now I ask that the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart, be pleasing and acceptable in your sight, for I and all of us know you as our strength and our redeemer. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, hallelujah and amen. 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 I am to understand that the theme for this particular Women's Missionary Day here at Bethel Chapel is let us Keep working in the vineyard, for there is much work to do. Loving and serving our fellow humankind. But for a subject matter, to shorten it and to keep it where you could remember it, it is for this morning, you are they. You are they. You know, we're accustomed to hearing phrases like, did you hear what they said? I heard that's what they said. <laughs> that's what they said happened. <laughs> All I know is that's what they said. <laughs> then someone asked a question. This person is curious. This person is logical, methodical. Oh, this person is rational and analytical. Now, this person asked the question, who, who are they? You know who they are. They are the ones who are moving and shaking things up. Um, they are working and they are uh, organizing. They are persevering. They are marching. They are sharing. They are caring. They are studying and they are praying. Right. But who, who are they? What are their names? Where do they come from? And today I came to tell you that you are they. In this 10th chapter of Luke, Jesus appoints what the word says are 70 others for ministry. But who were they? We don't know. We don't know their names. We don't know their family background or their social status whether they were married or single, young or old, rich or poor. All we know is that they paired up and 35 groups of missionaries hit the streets to tell folk about Jesus and to be living examples of who he was. Amen. But preacher, teacher, why 70? Other Bible versions say 72. But why not 50? 
Why not 100? Why 70? Why 72? Well, maybe because 70 has a connection with the 70 elders who went up with Moses on Mount Sinai and saw the glory of God. You know, every now and then God chooses you for something not because you're so special, not because of who your family is, not because of your occupation or your education, or not even because of how long you've been saved, but because he just wants you to see his glory. He wants you to see his power, and, and he wants you to see who you're working with and who's working with you. Why 70? I know you're expecting me to say something extremely profound. But all I can say is that it's better to be one of the unnamed 70 or 72 or whatever the number is who God knows and have your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life than to have a tarnished name like Judas Iscariot who was one of the well-known and named 12. You see, you are they. The ones whose names might not get called at annual conference, mid-year conference, All district right. conference, or quarterly conference, but God knows who you are. Right. He knows your name. He sees your devotion and your work. He gave you your measure of faith. And even if your name never gets named as a WMS life member before taking your last breath. Your names are written in the Lamb's book of life. Amen. Let me say this. The mission field is almost like a mine field. You know how it was back in the days when the Vietnam War was going on and mines were planted in the ground and you had no idea and you had to be careful every step you took. The mission field is almost like a mine field. You can't always see where the traps and the dangers are. People come to you with all kind of stories that are desperate. So you give, but you find out later that they did not pay the rent and uh, they did not pay the light bill and their mother really didn't need any medicine, but they use your charity for something else, if you know what I mean. But because you have the heart of Jesus, it's hard to see or hear somebody who's hungry or who's sleeping in their car. It hurts to know children don't have food, decent clothes, and shoes that fit their feet. It, it hurts to know a teen really wants to go to college but does not have the money to go. You don't want senior citizens who's worked hard all their lives to choose between paying the rent or buying medicine. And you know our youth need a, our youth need a support system to help them navigate the social injustices of the not so legal system. Yes, you, you are they. You're the ones trying to share the love and message of the church of yesterday to the unchurched of today, saying, love your neighbor as you love yourself to people who don't love themselves so they can't love nobody else. Right. Yeah, yeah, you are, you are the one. You, you're the one. You are they. You see, some folks see missionaries as a means of social services, welfare, and benefits. Some just want what you can put in their hands, but you can keep that Jesus thing to yourself. But they are the harvest. They were the harvest back then, and they are the harvest now. The mission field is plentiful. It's, it's full of all kinds of issues, needs, injustices, and sins. And you are they for such a time as this to plot the course, to spread the message, to share the love, and to live the life. But what does it take? And where do you start? Well, this text alludes to the fact that you need unity because we find that Jesus sent them out two by two. Oh, he could have sent one person to 70 different places. He could have if he wanted to, but he paired them up. 
You see, in Old Testament times, it was by the mouth of two witnesses that any charges could be brought against someone or a truth was established. And all I know is where two or three are gathered in the name of Jesus, he is in the midst. To do the kind of mind-filled mission work, you need the truth, the strength, the unity, and the power of the Lord. So we need each other, and we need the divine presence of God. We need each other because we have different gifts and talents and skills. We need each other because we have different experiences, insights, and ideas. We need each other because we are like sheep out here amongst wolves. Wolves, wolves roam through this community last Sunday morning, stalking and praying on God's people. And I don't know, really, I don't know what they thought would happen or how we would respond. But all I know is that God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. And with our sound mind, this community and this city and its leaders showed a unified front against the attacks of the devil. Also, uh, my Holy Ghost imagination reminds me that our God is the master potter. And out of the same lump of clay, he has sovereignly chosen some to be vessels of honor and others vessels of dishonor. I'm not making it up. Check out Romans 9, 21 through 24. See, some folk don't even know they are vessels of dishonor reserved for God's wrath. And while they are preying on other folk, they have already fallen to pray themselves to be used by the devil. But you, you are vessels of honor, commissioned by God himself. So stick together because you are chosen both to will and to do God's work for his pleasure. Yes, you, you are they. Yes, you are. You, you are they. Rooted and and grounded in your faith, alive and liberated by God's word, survivors of and reinforced by your ancestors. You are they. God's people survived 400 years of slavery twice as Jews in Egypt and Africans in America. God's people survived a holocaust. Oh, we shut down the bus company in Montgomery, Alabama by walking and sharing rides. I just imagine the German shepherds of the 60s found our blood tastes different from anyone ever's blood that they've ever bitten. Our blood is like the bitter waters of Mara in the Bible, and these waters of Mara were bitter from sediment and pollution from an unknown place. The bitterness of slavery, injustice, and inequality is this unknown place. Injustice and inequality has no place in God's creation. And even though it does exist, it does not originate from our God. See, water hoses knocked us down, but it couldn't put out the fire shut up in our bones. Uh, Billy clubs know our heads are tough, and the KKK know our spirit is strong. We are resilient, robust, rigorous, rugged, and resourceful. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus told them to go on out there and do their ministry because he was soon to come and show his face. Oh, I like that. And the commandment has not changed. The Lord, the Lord is telling us to go on out there. Telling you sisters, go on out there. Telling you pastors, go on out there. Even amongst wolves and do the ministry because he's going to do a follow-up visit and he's on his way to show his face. It's an assurance when you're not working alone and, and you know your leader is coming after you. When you can hear his voice in the background. Oh, you get a little more courage as you hear him say you can do all things through him who's going to give you strength and and that you are called, equipped, and chosen. And and when you hear him saying you are more 
than conquerors through him and by his love. Jesus is saying, go, go on out there and work. You work with that because you are they, the loved, the protected, and the directed. Yes, yes, these are some, these are some perilous times, Pastor Mason. The times when you got to do some things special. These are some perilous times, women's missionary leaders. These are the times when you got to take off your white dresses and your blue accessories and put your boots on the ground. And don't get me wrong, because you look beautiful in your white and blue, and I know it's much more comfortable to, to, to be in a bank with that on the battlefield, but our adversary, the devil, is sneaking around as a roaring lion seeking who he might devour. So every now and then you got to go into woman king kind of action. I don't know. Did you see the movie? Did you see Woman King? If you haven't seen Woman King, you you, you, ought, you really ought to check it out. You you you, you ought to check it out. Uh, uh, those sisters knew how to braid some hair, use some spears, hold some shields, talk some stuff, and stick together. I, I, I know sometimes it feels like it's just a few of you doing the work, Pastor. I know sometimes. Uh, it, it feels lonely when you, you look out and you see more spaces in the pews than people sitting in them. I, I know sometimes it feels like it's just a few of you. And you wonder, are we making any progress? Are we impacting our church? Are we positively impacting our community? Are we making a big impact? positive impact on this crazy world but don't be discouraged mm -mm. because the harvest was just as plentiful back then as it is now much work needed to be done and the laborers were few but when you've done all you can when you've worked hard and when you've traveled a lot and you've given much and when you've prayed long the next step is woman king war. Put on the whole armor of God. In the movies, those sisters spent time grooming their hair. And I thought, why bother since you were just going to be a warrior? But see, I understand they were preparing themselves from head to toe. And likewise, lady, in preparation, at the very center of your core is the truth. And, and it's tied around you like a belt. It said when you put on that whole armor, put on the belt of truth. You know the devil, he's a liar. Right. And, and the father of lies at that. So he can't stand the truth. So you got to let him see that you're not in this for the title. And, and you don't care whether or not your name is called. Because the truth is this what the world needs to see. And they need to see the light of Jesus and his truth now more than ever before. Gotta let the devil see your breastplate of righteousness given to you by Jesus Himself. Oh, you can't let the devil remind you of your mistakes. You can't let him remind you of your shortcomings. You just hold up that breastplate of righteousness. You, you stick your chest out. You say, Yes, I did what I did, but I've got. God's righteousness, and with that, I can fight any dart that you can ever throw my way. You got to let him see what you're working with. You got to make the devil wonder what happened to them cute WMS white and blue wearing sisters. Yeah, because you know what? He don't mind if you go to your meetings. Uh, the devil don't mind if you organize worship services like today. Uh, he, he don't mind if you have luncheons and he don't mind even if you fix up little Barbie dolls and give it to the bishop's wife. He, he don't mind that kind of stuff. But when you start talking about feeding somebody who's hungry, when you start talking about clothing someone who doesn't have something to wear, 
when you start talking about getting scholarship yes. for children to go to school, yes. when you start talking about building houses yes. for the homeless, when you start talking about after school programs yes. for the children, when you start talking about pre-prayer morning services before the kids go to school, that's when he gets word. Yes. Hold tight to your shield of faith. But what wins the battle is when the devil realizes that your hairdo is really your helmet of salvation. And don't forget, you got to talk your stuff. I mean talking about your Jesus. See, the forces of evil has it where you can't talk about Jesus in government. Can't go up in the courthouse talking about Jesus. Oh, you don't hear Jesus' name on TV shows. Every now and then somebody will pray, but they'll say, uh, uh, amen. And they won't mention in Jesus' name, a right. amen. Right. Uh, you can't call his name in schools. And, and God forbid you have religious conversations on some of these jobs. But you should talk about Jesus. Talk about him every chance you get. Yeah. Calling him the light of the world, the prince of peace, the wonderful counselor. Oh, call him mighty God, the lily of the valley, the lamb of God, Mary's baby, the savior of the world, the king of kings, the lord of lords, the bright and morning star. The Redeemer, the propitiation for my sins. Oh, the beloved Son of God. The way, the truth, and the life. The center of your joy. The wheel in the middle of the wheel because he keeps making the world go round in spite of all the evil because he's still choosing folk to make up that number that no man can number. And you keep on talking, calling him the solid rock and the chief cornerstone and the miracle worker and the peace in the middle of the storm, the bread of life, the one who makes water wet. I just threw that one in there. And the one with all power and the great I am. Yes, talk about him. Yes, my WMS sisters. You are they. You're part of the army that's rising up. See, yes, I know there's a lot going on out there. The mission field is loaded with people who need the transforming love of God. And sometimes you can't help but wonder, can I make a difference? Will that young man or that young woman listen to me? Or do they just want a handout? Where is the time to visit the sick, attend the meetings, organize the Worship services, get involved in social justice, take care of my family, see about my health, and take care of myself. Where, where is the time? Well, let me put it into the words of this song. The lyrics say, there is power in the name of Jesus. I, I, I just heard a moment ago when... You all were singing, praise him. And you got to a part that I'm not sure if I've ever heard before. You just said, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Sometimes you just got to use the power in, in the name of Jesus. It's so powerful that he declared that every knee would bow. Every tongue would confess to the glory of God that Jesus Christ is our Lord. He's our Savior. Yes, there's power in the name of Jesus. Yes, yes, there's power in the name of Jesus to break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. You know, the song says, all sufficient, so freely given. Such a price. 
brought our redemption. Heaven's gate swing wide. We believe. Do you believe today there's power in the name of Jesus? Not just any kind of power, but there's wonder, wonder working power. Remember, sister, you are they. Uh huh. You, you are they. The army that's rising up. The song said, There's an army rising up to break every chain. Oh, we might not hear it now, but one day we're going to hear the devil's chains falling. Falling off our children, right. falling off our government, <laughs> falling off our churches, right. falling off our yeah. finances, falling off our communities, yeah. and falling off the races of people. Yeah. Can't you hear somebody saying, who said they heard chains fall? <laughs> and your answer is going to be this time, we said. We heard it because we are they. So let me encourage you today. You are they. Whether your name is called or not, you are they. Whether you're a WMS life member or not, you are they. Don't be discouraged and don't withdraw because of what needs to be done. For you will reap a harvest for the Lord if you faint not. My sisters, you are they. The ones who are commissioned to show the kingdom of God so people can make a decision about the king. You are they. If you're here today and you understand that people can make all kinds of decisions. All kinds of decisions in life. God gives us free will to make. Isn't that something? The God who made you, made this earth, who's got it spinning on its axis, and we can't even feel it going around allows you to decide whether or not you want him. The God whom we have said we're going to separate church from state. How can the created ever be separated from the creator? But there's a decision that you can make that can be one of the most important decisions that you ever make in your life and that's deciding to choose the one who made you to choose his offer of grace forgiveness of sins and eternal life now consider every breath you breathe in and breathe out comes from him. And he wants you to have a type of breath that will continue to breathe when this breath in this life is over. But he says there's a way in which you can have this and that's through accepting my perfect gift, my son Jesus Christ. He will keep you breathing in a state of eternal life when this life is over. I'm not going to force him on you, but I want you to choose him so I can show you my glory. So you can witness my glory in my kingdom. Why refuse such a beautiful gift? He's not charging you for it. He's not asking you to do anything to receive it. He's not asking you to make any sacrifices to have it. He says, freely I give to you, and I want you to freely receive it. Is there one today? Is there one under the sound of my voice as you stand all over this sanctuary? 
who has not yet made the most important decision in your life. Better than any decision you could ever make. Won't you come? Or won't you contact this church and let the pastor know that I've heard the message. Because you see, we're not called to preach to demonstrate how well we can preach. We're called to preach to demonstrate that God loves you so much he does not want you to perish. He wants you to have eternal life. That's the reason why the word goes out every week and it's been going out since these 70 and these 12 were commissioned to go into the streets back then. I don't know whether or not you have your name affiliated with a particular church, but it is a wonderful thing to have the extension of a church family. I'm going to testify. I know it for myself. Came here 31 years ago, had no family at all. But my husband tells me now that I know more people in this city than he knows where he was born and raised. And that's because of the extension of my church families. They've been there with me when I was down. They've helped me when I didn't have no help. They prayed for me. They stood by me as they watched me go up and down and through and out. That's what we need in these days. Because, see, you can't choose your blood family, but you can choose your church family. Won't you consider? Won't you consider Bethel Chapel to be your home, a place where the word of God is being truthfully preached? And maybe you have something that's burdening you today. Maybe you feel like you've been going through this life all by yourself and that there's just no relief in sight I ask you to come forward for prayer or call call this church this pastor is a godly woman a praying woman she will pray with you and I will pray with you and we will Pray with you right here on today. Don't let this hour pass and leave you discouraged and feeling like there's nothing left. Because we are out here. We are they. And we want you to have the very best that God has to offer. Won't you consider this invitation on this day? Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Pastor Mason, for the opportunity to stand behind the sacred debt which you have been appointed to. Thank you, Women's Missionary, for the invitation to share with you on this day. Thank you, God, for the calling and for the anointing. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Powerful message, uh, inspirational yeah. message from Reverend yeah. Hopkins. She's always on time with something, always. And like she said, we are they. You are they. We're all out in the mission field. We all have work to do. Not only the women in white, but every last one of us here. And I'm going to give way to her on remarks because I know our pres uh, chairperson of Area 5 has to leave, so I'm going to let her your remarks, followed by Sister Gwen Bailey, and then from our pastor, Reverend Amen. Mason. Amen.
Uh, first of all, we want to thank God for Reverend Hopkins and the word that she delivered today. Very inspiring. Made me want to think a little bit more about, it's not about the white dress, it's not about this stove, but it's about the work in the kingdom of God and the work that we have to do to share Jesus Christ with each and every one. Certainly, we want to thank the Roberta Greenfield uh, Women's Missionary Society for their service today. And we certainly want to thank the leadership of Sister Gwen Bailey, that she serves here at uh, Bethel Chapel, as well as our Area 5 Treasurer. Uh, we want to thank Reverend Mason for allowing us to be here today uh, for your open invitation. And once again, we want to thank everyone for your commitment to service uh, in this community. And uh, that's all that I had to say today. But once again, thank you for everything that you do for the cause of mission. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, I don't have much to add, but I just would like to say that we have had a blessed morning here today. We, we certainly want to thank Reverend Hopkins. And as Devorah says, she's always on time. She always has a powerful message. And I've heard her many times. And, and this time just exceeded a little bit more. It's going up a little higher, a little higher. And we just thank God for her and her message. And we know that we do have work to do. And we, whether we're small in number or large, there's still much work for all of us to do. You don't have to, as she uh, said, you don't have to have a title. You don't, your name does not have to be called. But the work that is done, that is needed to be done, we can all play a part in it. And we just thank each and every one of you for coming out. Those who are viewing on uh, live stream, we thank you for attend, you attending. And please uh, just go back and listen to it again. That's what I do when we have uh, messages on from our service or any other service. I go back and look at it again because you hear something that you didn't quite get the first time. Amen. But again, we say just thank you, and we thank our pastor for allowing us to have this program here. And I think she's up next. What a word, um, one that I certainly received the charge, amen, uh, to continue uh, the work of the Lord, growing not weary and well-doing, amen. I uh, just want to commend uh, our WMS here at Bethel Chapel. Um, what a tremendous program you have put on today. Uh, and not just a program, but you provided ministry mm -hmm. on today. And so can we just thank God for them? Amen. amen. Again, we thank uh, each of you who have uh, fellowship with us on today, um, those of you online and our guests here uh, in the sanctuary, we thank God for you again and are so glad uh, to have you and pray that you will come and worship with us again. Amen. Amen. Oh, goodness, I thought I was through. <laughs> Again, uh, I thank God for the opportunity to stand and to share with you on today. I don't ever want you to think that you're not important, that you don't count, because you are they. You are the one who God continues to commission to go out and be his light in this time of darkness. Won't you please stand so that we can be dismissed? And as we dismiss from each other, we never are dismissed from the presence and the power of our Lord and Savior. Chapel, and this is Mel, and we just thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate that so much. Amen. I'm so grateful for your sweet expression of love. Amen. Amen. Again, God sent out 70 others, and he sent them out two by two. He told them to go out and to spread the message of love. The mission field is like a minefield. 
We need each other. Amen. And if we're looking for the ones to go, you are they. Now may the love of God, the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the precious fellowship and relationship with the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with you from this day until we assemble again in the name of the triune God. May the spirit of Christian mission enter every heart. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Be blessed, my father's children.